Hey budget nerds, today we'll take a close look at a portable 4G travel router and see if it's worth grabbing. I'm being very careful what I review these days. This one managed to sneak in though, so let's see what it's all about. It's a 4G LTE portable router. It clocks in at $75 to $80 and is made in China. And it's small enough to toss in a bag and carry around with you. It will handle up to 300 megabits per second on its 2.4 gigahertz network and 867 megabits per second on its 5.0 gigahertz network. It will charge with any 5 volt power adapter that will supply 2 amps. It has zero order or metamaterial antennas, which means they perform better compared to normal antennas of the same size. There are quite a few places you could use this, and the live streaming out in the wild sounds like the perfect application, actually. Here are specs for the especially nerdy. In the box, you get a small manual, the router, which makes sense. It's very lightweight and feels fine, but there isn't much to it. On the front, there's a status light. And on the back, there's a WAN port, which can be changed to a LAN port, another LAN port, a reset button, because all routers have to have a reset button, a USB-C power port, and a nano SIM card tray, and that's pretty much it. All that's left is the power adapter and the USB cable. Oh, and it also comes with a SIM card tool. I tossed in a SIM card I have and waited for a bit for it to connect. The blue light will be solid once it connects to the LTE network. I ran a speed test because it's written in some nerd code of conduct book that you must, and I got around 13 megabits per second. Nothing to write home about, but in my neck of the woods with my signal isn't surprising. Hitting up the router's page, you can see it will give you the sorts of infos you'd expect, including Wi-Fi info, and the status of the two RJ45 ports. The internet tab will let you choose how and when it uses the cellular network. If you have it hooked up to a modem or standard internet, you can tell it to use that first, and cellular only as a backup. When you switch it to cellular as a backup, the combo WAN LAN port acts as a LAN port. Under the Wi-Fi tab, you can adjust the Wi-Fi names and options, Standard stuff, really. On the Client tab, you can see it will show you the devices that are connected and give you the chance to block them by creating a blacklist or even a whitelist. Also pretty standard. On the Advanced tab, you can change DHCP and other network settings, including setting up AWSEED, which sounds like a sort of VPN. You can set up wireless ACL. Configure guest Wi-Fi and see some cellular stats like data usage, connection info, and you can configure a few cellular settings. There are also your typical system settings as well. Nothing groundbreaking here, but everything most people should need. I didn't see any parental controls though, and I couldn't find any options for port forwarding either. I connected a computer to it via Wi-Fi and tried another speed test. Speeds were better, around 26 megabits per second, but that is just how much my cellular connection varies. It's nice that this little router has options for wiring devices, but connecting wirelessly is the way to go, as these LAN ports are just 100 megabits per second. I wasn't able to test the wireless range nor the speeds transferring files on my network, sadly, but I expect it's not as strong nor as far as your typical home router, but for the short time we were using it, we didn't have any issues. It wasn't quite powerful enough for a remote desktop. It did work, but it would sometimes lag. So if you were doing anything intensive or something lag sensitive, I wouldn't recommend it for that. However, you most likely wouldn't be using this router for things like that anyway. I did tear it open to see what makes it tick and found this chip. This is the 4G chip and the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi chip and this appears to be DDR2 RAM. 
It's a pretty simple design, and the hardware in here certainly creates some of its own limitations. If you're after a higher-end, feature-rich travel router, then keep looking. However, if you need something for the basics while out and about, and want to use your LTE connection, this one should work. It's a simple design with basic options, but if you don't need anything crazy, it may just work for you. Let me know what you think, or if you have a good one to recommend in the comments, and thanks for watching.